Well, Michael, welcome. Welcome. It's such a pleasure to be chatting with you. And what an amazing setup you have got there. This is uh this is great. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. It's it's a really unique movie that you've got on your hands here, uh, as good as dead. It's got a, a little bit of everything in it. Uh I want to start by just asking where did this story come from? How long it's been in your head for? It's been in my head for a little while. Um the story came came from um it was it was kind of in, inspired by my brother. My brother, my oldest brother, he moved to Mexico. He just just one day just left Florida and took his motorcycle and just drove across country, wound up uh, in Mexico, fell in love with a woman there and fell in love with the the culture, the climate, everything and he and he settled in a place called uh Playa del Carmen. And um so uh, this story was in my head, and I, 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 I thought to set it there. Uh, so, and my brother, he, you know, later he retired, and he, you know, he, he raised a family. His, uh, his, his, his uh, kids are, I think, early thirties now, or early thirties, and I think he's got one late twenties. And um, you know, as so he. Um, Unfortunately, um, my, my brother passed away about a month before filming. Oh. And I, 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 I use his name. His name was Brian. Yeah. So um, I use his name. He was going to be my language coach because uh, I was going to, I intended on speaking half of this movie in Spanish and my brother was going to be my coach and my assistant. But unfortunately he, he fell ill to COVID. But um, he, he, you know, he, he led me in spirit and, you know, you know, I honor him um, in in the uh, portrayal. I, I try my best to do that. That just gives it such a, a strong personal, um, you know, component. I'm going to go back and watch the film again with that in mind and just sort of um, I think I'll get a lot more out of it knowing that. But um, you do have a great cast in this movie, too. Obviously, you've got your Tom Berenger and your Louis Mandalore. You've also got mm-hmm. um, Guillermo Ivan and, and Luca Oriel. Do you write movies sort of did you write the movie with them in mind or did you just luck out you know when you auditioned i I, lu- I lucked out tremendously with luca and guillermo i mean uh, t- tremendously i i you know just had the story and i and and i wanted to you know to bring the bring the latino community into it uh because I, I feel like you know i wanted to bridge those two things and you don't really see this type of action with martial arts and you know that i, I wanted to do do that in that setting and you know, I had such a, a great and deep love and respect for Latino culture, so I really wanted to, you know, kind of do it there. Yeah, right. I am curious when when you cast when you when you have a movie full of kind of people playing gang members and stuff like that, and they've got all the tattoos over the face and stuff like that. Is that something that you get out of central casting, or is that like an extensive makeup process, or how do how do you find how do you find <laughs> guys with that look? <laughs> well, you know, it, it, more so, you you find if they've got that aura, you know, yeah. and then you 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 know, makeup can can do wonders, <laughs> you know. It's great when you we don't when you don't know the difference between the makeup and the real real stuff. That that's when you're right there in the ballpark. But you know, we we cast people who kind of you know really understood and and just could ad- adopt the uh, the characteristics, but. Um, yeah, so I, mean, I, I was extremely lucky finding the people are they're finding people who actually improved upon the writing, you know. So you know, I was really lucky with that. Well, speaking of the writing, uh, perhaps one of the best fan services I've ever seen, or in a long time at least, is your action movie banter in this, um, especially the Jean Claude Van Damme stuff. Like oh, <laughs> the confusion you. with those movies. <laughs> It really made my day watching this, especially mentioning something like In Hell, which, you know, on the podcast that we host, I mentioned that movie a lot. And so, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> it just made my day. And I, I was actually surprised that you didn't throw some sudden death in there. <laughs> that would have been meta. Well, yeah, you, you know, because no matter what, man, where, where you come from, one thing that unites us all, especially a lot of guys, is the movies. <laughs> and everybody knows everybody's been a Van Damme fan and it's you know I wanted to do things that would make you forget that it's a movie for a minute because you're just watching people and yeah. n- never never mind this guy's so, supposedly a gangster he's still a human and and <laughs> in, in different circumstances that guy could be the president of a bank you yeah. know 
Yeah. You know, so that's what I, I really want to do. And I think movies make it great to, to point that out, that we're all so similar. It's just, so, you know, what, what we're exposed to, you know? So yeah. th that's really what it is. The, the leader of a gang, uh, you know, would be the leader of a, you know, who knows, a, a, a university, you know, <laughs> yeah. in, in another circumstance. But, you know, it's, it's, we're the same, you know? So that's what I wanted to kind of, point that out and when you you think the gang member doesn't have much in, in in the area of like honor and you know integrity you find out that they they very well can yeah you know and sometimes the guy who's supposed to be you know have his everything together may not like my character you know so you know that's that i i wanted to kind of exploit those things but it was done it was done so well too it was like watching glenn and i have a conversation <laughs> You know, one guy <laughs> super enthusiastic, like, oh, it's just like this. And the other guy, what are you talking about? No. <laughs> well, well, thank you. I, if if you, you feel like it's like you and me having a conversation, that's that's a, I, I take that as a, a tremendous comment. <laughs> i got to admit, that, I've that, never, I've, I've, I've never called Ben Rambro, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great line. That is a great well, thank line. Thank you. Thank you. So, so as, a, as a writer and producer, how tempting is it to overstep the mark and start, you know, directing a little bit when you're when you're filming? Well, you, you kind of do that anyway, because I mean, it, it, it's. But see, what's great is that the relationship I had with 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 uh, our Ellis Fra Frazier, the director, it's it, there's no ego involved. You know, we we we're it's just uh, the whole spirit of of just working together. And if someone has a great idea, I don't care if it's the guy dumping dumping trash. Yeah. I'll take that idea. You know, you know, it's, it's about the collaboration. So that that's really what it is. So there's no real definition of who's doing what. If I got a good idea or whatever, you know, it, it, it's like, yeah, I, I tend to, um, you know, if I have something in my head, why would I not uh, tell the director, hey, I see it like this. What, what about you? He may take that idea or have a better one. So that's what you do. Yeah. Do you find do you find that that causes a bit of trouble with the other actors? Like when you've like when you've written this line and you've like done all the dialogue in your head and you're like, and then this guy says this, and then this happens, and the actor has a completely different take on it, and you're like, no, 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 what the hell are you doing? Like you got to do it <laughs> no, like this. No, no. <laughs> I mean, I I'd rather be organic from that that actor. These are these lines are suggestions. C certain things, of course. Or you know a little bit more to script, but how you might say something, the organic way that you might you know e express yourself, I'm going to go for that more than anything else. Um, so sometimes the 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 dialogue will influence uh, you know because you really want to be pretty honest with the dialogue, like to where when it's really good dialogue, you feel like yes, I could see people saying this, you know, yeah. and and how people listen and. And but then you you got to look into the character of that person. How is this particular character going to hear that? You know, and once you do that, you got to let go and you got to because the actor has the responsibility of being that character. Right. And that and they're going to they're going to be thinking things from from the honest standpoint of the character that, that I don't care who you are as a director, as a producer, you need to listen to them. So I know because, of, you know, because that person has to walk around in this this character shoes, the director, you don't have to, you know, so that 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 actor is the person that takes it across the goal line. So there's a certain point where, you know, you, you raise them up, then they're off on their own and then they become the leader in their world. Yeah, right. well, I love and you know, that they, they say that acting is reacting and your reactions to a lot of the stuff. To a lot of the the dialogue that's thrown your way, and a lot of the the actions, are, like is simply amazing. Like the, like like I always feel like you really are the audience in 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 your movies. Like it is like you know when people say something something weird or they do something that's that's totally you know in the movie, and you're just like, what? What are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, see, that's amazing. the thing. You you got to be be you know. There's the dialogue you learn it, but then you got to unlearn it, and you have to listen to it like you've you know, you've never heard it before. And if you have a good actor in a scene, he could save a scene because if somebody says something in a ridiculous way, that 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 character, you know, that actor has to, 
you make it real. Like th that was the intention. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. So I, re I remember I was in, a, I was d doing a mo movie in Bulgaria and uh, um, there's a guy who's playing this um, officer who has to arrest me or whatever, but th he was a very famous Bulgarian actor. And um, there was a scene where he insisted on using English right which is of course not his first language mm -hmm. but he'd worked on it and he wanted to use he wanted to speak english instead of going through a translator and so he insisted but every time he spoke he would say he would talk to me <laughs> he, was, he, was not, he was screaming at me and he wasn't aware that he was screaming at me and the director was like what do we do what do, i said don't worry about it Right. <laughs> so we're doing a scene and he's talking to me like this. And I'm going, <laughs> yes, I understand. But I'm, I'm speaking back to him. You like, give it back. Like, like Jesus Christ, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> but, and so it made the scene really work because I'm because I look at the reality of it. If somebody's talking to me that loud and he's speak, speaking that loud, I'm going to react. And so people think, oh, my, that was a great scene. It could have been a very bad scene. If, <laughs> yeah. I, if I had acted like that was totally normal, yeah. <laughs> how if I responded in the way that was on the page, right? Just acting like he's speaking very normal, he looked crazy. Yeah. You know, so yeah. So but but that that's the way. You just have to unlearn all that stuff and then be that person in in, in that, you know, because you never know what the other actor is gonna give to you. Yeah. And yeah. When, when I've got great actors like Luca and, and you know Guillermo, like my job is easy because all, all I have to do is listen to. Them. Yeah, and I guess this this question I think you kind of answered it, and and not to be you know repetitive or anything, but your career you've you've had a big evolution over your career, and now that you do direct films and produce and write, do you find acting to be any different now? Uh, now that you understand what a director does compared to when you first started. Honestly, I've, the first thing I've ever done was direct, to be honest with you. Mm. I was doing I was do, doing little films when I was 10 and, right. and, and I was editing them and everything else uh, before I even acted. Like, so I've always looked at things from a director standpoint, like from the first movie I ever did, I've always influenced the way certain mm. things were shot. So, I mean, it's all part of the same thing to me. It's always been. Um, it, it it was just as an actor to for me to, sh you know, shut up my director mindset was was hard. My, hmm. my, my main movie, the movie that um, that uh, put me in in the works was the, the Mike Tyson story. That was my my big break. I created three scenes in that movie. And uh, the director hired me. One 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 big reason he hired me is because he saw a short movie that I directed. Right. right. So 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 it's interesting that directing something gave me my first big acting role. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't know that. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. your your director, um, R. Alice Fraser. He's. I mean, he makes the kind of movies that Ben and I talk about all the time and i put him in the same sort of category as your jesse v johnson's and your isaac florentines do you all have this fraternity that you share talent with because you guys all make very similar films but ben and i people like us we just absolutely froth over them we love them oh great well i appreciate it like i i know we've all you know frazier myself isaac we've all grown up on the same like in the same movies you know and uh, no matter what, like, you know, those those mano a mano movies, those like the cleanest Eastwoods, the, the Charles Bronsons, you know, uh, but it, it's there is always a code. You know, the, the movies I love and the characters I've loved have all always lived by a code. And I think that that's a universal thing. That's something that I, I believe in. I live my life by. Yeah. Uh, so as somebody who lives their life by a code uh not to sound you know you know big headed or anything i i do since i am very much the you know to some degree some 
like like the characters. Um, like I will, like I mean, I I kid you not. Ten minutes ago, no, no joke. Before I got here, um, I was I I almost inter I I, I well I did intercede in a, a raving lunatic on the on the street. A big raving lunatic was screaming in the middle of the street, ripping up a sign, and bullying a, a small guy selling flowers. And I stopped that um, and got him. I, I don't think of myself as an actor or anything like that. I mean, I think that's the way I live. But just just so happens, Ugh. you know, th that's a code I live by. You, you're you're not going to bully somebody in my presence, period. You know, I don't care, you know, who you are, <laughs> or how much money is in yeah. my account. That's, that's not going to happen. Oh, give this man a reality show. You need your own reality show. <laughs> I'm, not too, I'm not into those too much. Yeah, those things I, I don't understand. It's like, why would you be allowed to exchange people in your, your personal business? But, 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 you know. No, one but, like, um, yeah. one, one like Seagal's one where he's the, the deputy. <laughs> the deputy. Yes. I, I swear, that, he, he, he could have a second career as a comedian if he just. <laughs> Oh, it's a, there's a part of me that just wants him to go. You know what? I'm gonna stop taking myself serious, and I'm gonna go for comedy. <laughs> yeah, I just, it's like I so wish I want him to be like the new Naked Gun. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's it's a train wreck. But I'm like, it's like he, it would be. He's 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 funny to me at this point. Yeah, yeah, he's he's hilarious. Um. Mm -hmm. You know, but I don't know. <laughs> I think I think one of his greatest talents as an actor is like he always has this like little twinkle in his eye when he's doing a lot of these scenes, and you're like, are you are you taking the piss? It's a line that could be very. He dances on a line that could be <laughs> hysterical. Yeah, yeah. Or or very cringy. Yeah, that's right. And it says both kind of coincide. Yeah. But I just want him to go further over and just go into the <laughs> yeah. hysterical. Because he, he, man, I, I, uh, man, I, I, I would love to do a comedy with that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a remake of Tough Guys. Remake so of Tough funny. Guys. <laughs> yeah. Huh? You just have to write one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you got to trick him into a comedy that he doesn't know is a comedy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, he could be the straight guy. He could be the straight guy. And, uh, he won't know it that he's actually the comedy you, guy. <laughs> you do the whole thing as if it's straight. The only person who doesn't know it's a comedy is him. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Is in on it. <laughs> so um, before we let you go, just a, a couple of sort of lighter questions. You know, you're always incredibly ripped. What is your weakness when you have downtime or a cheat day? Oh, yeah, I'm going to sound like a nerd. <laughs> but I mean, I honestly don't like junk. I, I don't I don't see what the the lure is like. I'm so used to food that works, mm. you know, <laughs> some nutritional value that if if I ate junk, it's it's kind of I'd have to force myself to do it. And. You know, and, and I'd feel terrible. I'd, I'd feel lethargic. I love working out. I love having yeah. the energy to work out and then replenish myself. So I cheat. Yeah, do I don't you, know what do a you cheat sit, at. Do you huh? sit at that kind of 6 to 8% body fat kind of you know thing all the time? Or do you have, do you bulk and do you cut and do you do all no, of that? No, no, no. I never bulk. See, every every time I'm ever getting ready for a movie, I'm trimming down. It's it's just like a fighter getting ready for a fight. So I, I forget what you know. You're you know I I don't know how to do the convergence, but the, the um, but like if I'm walking around at 230 pounds, I my my goal is to get under 220. Right. You know I, you know and so that's what I do. Um, so I, I liked being under 220, like be around 215 when I'm working. Um, so, you know, so it gets a little frustrating because my body tends to want to bulk. Mm. Um, but it's not about lifting weights. It's all, all always about, you know, running and all that type of stuff to get ready. 
sometimes, um, you know, I'm injured and I can't get my weight down and it frustrates me. Yeah. But I, yeah. So. Um, now, do you have finally, a, do you have a sweet tooth? Do you, do you like chocolate or anything? No? Not at all. No, nice. I have no, I have no sweet tooth whatsoever. I mean, uh, oh, crackers. That's, that's my, <laughs> yeah. Like if I, like, uh, what do you call it? Like townhouse crackers. I can't eat like two of those. I'll eat a whole sleeve of them. <laughs> so it's just our box. I'll, I'll tear up a box. But that that's probably just the crackers and little crunchy things like that is my weakness. But, you know, we don't, they're forbidden in the house. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah I, I, I pretty much like, uh, you know, I eat kind of, you know, I wouldn't say boring, but my wife cooks really well and she cooks healthy food that tastes really good. Yep. Awesome. So, yeah. I awesome. noticed that, that, that uh, she has a cameo in the film as well. Like, I, I know oh, that you yeah. guys have been working together for a while, but, yeah. uh, you know, I noticed just at the end, I was like, oh, my God, there she is. Yeah, she pops up in the beginning and the end. And the end. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, she, yeah, so we, we t even my kids don't really eat, a, you know, a lot of that craziness. Is that, you know? is that hard, though? Is that, do they bring it into the house and then you have to, like, you can't no, be they, around it? They really don't eat bad either. It's, <laughs> it's. It's, it's weird. what you know. It's what you know. Yeah. Like if they're raised on that way, then they don't know any better. Or yeah, any but, worse. you know, they, they they like they they have sweet tooth. Um, I just don't. It's like sweet stuff like drives me. It, it it's too shocking for me. Even yeah. like liquid, like look, look, it's not. I drink this kind of stuff, man. It's yeah. like <laughs> like you know, it's like essence of, of of cherry. This used to be so nasty to me when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? But I, I, you know, now, now I love that kind of stuff. I, I just, I don't know. I, I lost my sweet tooth about five years ago, and I just, I don't know. Like, um, I, as sweet as I go is a bottle of Gatorade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's well, not too good for you either. But no, no, it's not. Um, before we we let you run, one final question. I want to take you right back to sort of the early years of your career, and you did, um, you did make two of the Toxic Avenger movies, which are. Oh boy! Massive <laughs> favorites, massive favorites. Oh, yeah. Cool. What yeah. does what did those movies and and trauma mean to you? Because they've given a lot of people a, a kickstart. I loved it. I loved it. I man, I I I love that experience. I love that style of like so zany that you can't overact. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just so. It was so much fun. I, I miss doing that. Really, you know. Uh, and and I I made friends uh, on on those movie sets that I talk to to this day. You know, it, it that that's like a club that I'm I'm proud to be part of. Yes, oh, oh fantastic! Yeah. Well, thanks so much for you know sitting down to have a chat with us. Um, as good as Dead is a really fun movie, and I hope that at least uh, some people listening or watching this um, who haven't heard of it will go and, and check it out because I think you've done a great job selling it, uh, that's for sure. And, um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. I look forward to, you know, the next time. And, and I swear, I got to get out to your land sometime soon because it's one of my favorite places. <laughs>